Good morning and welcome morning. to our Life Community Baptist Church. What I'm going to do today is welcome here those in the Phoenix and those online and those joining on later on YouTube. So hopefully welcome to you all. Um, obviously a warm welcome to anybody who hasn't been here before um, uh, or their first time. I haven't said who I am. My name's Dave. Yes, there you go. I'm Dave. I'll be leading the service this morning. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> That's my youngest. Um, if you would like to find out a bit more about Life Community Baptist Church, then please either bug one of us or, alternatively, if you're a bit shyer, then you can go to www.life-baptist.org.uk. Yes, there you go. A nice, easy one to remember. Um, I'm sure if you just put into Google Life Community Baptist Church Horsham, it will come up to the right place. But there you go. So what are we doing today? Um, I think we have a, a second slide after our um, up there, and it will be pretty obvious. It's a pretty amazing thing that we've been doing for the last few weeks. Um, it's called Embracing Justice. It's so actually got rainbows. It's got rainbows on it, yeah. We thought that was a bit more exciting. So what do we want to do today? We wanted to carry on with our, our service going through, our series going through Embracing Justice. Why is it like a rainbow? We're following the... Uh, Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book called Embracing Justice that I forgot to bring to hold up in front of you. But um, uh, Sarah is following it. It's written by um, Isabel Hamley. Um, and we are definitely recommending it as a church. If you want to follow uh, this book, that will give you a much bigger, broader insight into what we're doing. Um, so if you haven't got a copy, then still time to get one. Um, uh, and there's much more detail about there in about the subjects that we're covering. Obviously, we're just doing a light touch, if you like, on the top, and there's a much deeper uh, well of uh, information in there. So where have we been so, so far? So the first few, this is our third session. So in the first session, we had Wally look at it from, um, he explored Genesis, and he uh, unpacked the idea of the original blueprint for justice, um, and uh, he, he showed us that we were created as image bearers of God um, with an inherent equality um, between all human beings. And my personal takeaway, I appreciate it's not everyone's takeaway, but for me, I, I saw it as, you know, we have different pieces of the jigsaw and without each other, we don't, well, with each other rather, we complete the situation. So sort of male and female particularly fitting together gives us a, a, a wholesome Way of having equality and it's not necessarily just exactly the same. Um, in the following week Pete I was interviewed by Sarah, I, I, I really enjoyed that particular one uh, partly because it's my wife interviewing and I always like seeing her but the, <laughs> the other part is the fact that I thought it, it really helped us dig into quite a difficult subject where it's very hard to um, really pinpoint things down um, because justice is quite a tricky word. Um, so what did they look at? They looked at the Exodus story and, uh, and the human injustices revealed there. And my takeaway was that justice, justice is often understood from our own personal perspective. So when you ask someone what justice is, often you get a different answer depending on who they are, particularly if they come from a different culture. So um, my personal takeaway was God's justice may be quite hard to define or comprehend because that would imply that we would understand him fully. I think that's quite a hard one to do. So it just reminded me that justice was quite a tricky topic. Um, this week, we're going to have Ray uh, here with us, joining with us, and he's going to be talking about building communities of justice. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to tell us a little bit about his work of Home of Peace. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, so don't worry, we'll, we'll inform you a bit more about that. So uh, that's much more relevant for today. So if you like, we've done a bit of theology, we've done a bit of understanding the background, and now we're getting into some nitty gritty of what we're actually doing today and justice as it is today. So let's pray. And because I haven't prayed yet, which is probably bad form for anybody leading a service, but anyway, give me, give me credit for my first time. So let's pray and then we'll hand over to Julie to uh, lead us in some sung worship. So first of all, thank you, Lord, for uh, everyone here, everyone on Zoom, everyone watching on YouTube in the future, and we ask that you would help us hear the words that you want to, that 
are really relevant for us personally. Help us uh, take home those little nuggets of wisdom, little gems of knowledge um, that help us reach for a bit better to get to know you a bit more, to help us with our own personal walk a bit more. And uh, yeah, we ask you to sit away all the rest and uh, help us focus on what it is that you would like us to focus on. Amen. Right, I'm going to pass over to Julie and then we'll have some song worship. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Maureen and Matt and Martin assisting me today. Uh, Sarah would have been playing, but she's at home. Testing positive. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to start um, with a song, Giving Thanks. Um, we have so much to give thanks to God for, despite all the horrible world news we're hearing. Um, I want to give thanks um, just for one thing that he's done, the release of Nazanin Sagari Radcliffe mm. and the other guy, I forget his name, Anoush something. Um, just wonderful news that after so many years she's been released. So we want to give thanks for that. But well, we are aware there are still other dual nationals held in captivity. Mm. So we pray for their release. We want to give thanks now. So if you'd like to stand, and we're going to give thanks with a grateful heart. <coughs> give thanks with a grateful heart. thanks for all your great mercies. We give thanks that you are always with us, even when we don't feel your presence. We give thanks that despite all the horror stories we hear in Ukraine, you are still working miracles. You are with your people. And we thank you that you have forgiven us. 
as we sing, You are my king, what amazing love. <coughs> I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I accepted, you were content. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love. to honour you in everything we do. It's hard to remember going about our daily lives that you are with us all the time. You watch and see and hear what we do and what we say. Father, help us to be worthy of the honour that you bestow on us. And Father, we thank you that you've given the privilege, given us the privilege of doing your work on earth. 
Thank you, Father. Amen. <coughs> and today, the songs in order for next time. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, all the band. Um, Yes, right. Uh, we have got, hopefully, a little slide today to do a little bit of a memory verse. So um, I have two, two girls that might be able to help me. And hopefully, if Andy can get up the, uh, the slide, hopefully it have some pictures on it, which will help us for some memory verse for today. See if we can try and remember it. But we've got to figure out what the memory verse is, first of all. And this is the game that I'm hoping you girls will help me do. So, um, do you want to tell me what do you think the memory verse starts uh, with? If you see, I'm going to ask Lani, what do you think the first word might be? Be strong. Hold on, what do you think that first word might be, Lani? And then I'll do you for the second okay. one. What's the first picture on the top there? Can you see that? What animal is that? Bee. A bee. Mm -hmm. So the first word's going to be? Bee. Bee. <laughs> bee. Yes. Guy. He's okay. trying to work out. Uh, yeah. uh, he's holding, he's holding like, one of those bar things. I can't remember what his name is. Uh, what's his name? Is? But <coughs> who knows what that guy's name yeah. is? But, what do you think um, the word is? Strong. There you go. Be strong. Okay. Be strong. Um, now, He's in the audience, this the, the third one's a bit more tricky, and they might not get this. But be strong. What do you think the next word is? Oh, I want to pick someone. I want to pick someone. Go on, then. you pick uh, someone, Jeff. Uh, I need someone. I need people with my hand up. Go on, choose someone with their hand up. Go on. Go on, quick. Three, two, one. Take. Take. There you go. Yes. Yes. Okay, Lani, over to you. Can you read? Can you tell me what that the top right one is? The big red. Hot. Ah. So do you think that one? The word's going to be. There you go. So, be strong. I think it's supposed to be love. Take heart. Uh, I think it's supposed to be love. Yeah. What do you think the next word is going to be, Jesse? Do you want to do this uh, one? What? Who's the, the finger, finger pointing at? Who's the finger pointing at? You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you. So take heart. Be strong and take heart. All you. All you. All oh, of you. Now, this one is for everyone in the audience because it's quite. This is, by the way, this is done by Sarah and she's she's super duper. She would be oh, obviously doing it now. I'll pick someone again. I'll pick but someone. this one is quite tricky. And it's the organization. Yeah, but can you tell me what the acronym is for that particular one? United it's the WHO. Which spells <laughs> who? <laughs> All you who? <laughs> uh, and the next one is also very tricky. But Jess, do you want to give it a go? Now then, stone. What's the yeah. What's the so growing? Yeah. And do you think it's a good, a, a, an easy place to grow, or do you think it's quite a tricky place to go? Tricky grow? place. Well, of course it is. There's no. There's no fields. And imagine, imagine if it was uh, a place that was growing in that random place. So it, it, we're, we're, we're going for something that's quite a tricky one. Struggle. Oh. I'll give you the context. So be strong and take heart, all you who. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> we're going to go for it's something that you would you would not find. It gives you struggle in the box. I'm going to give you a clue. So it gives you hope. We're trying to convey the idea that the flowers are in a place where you wouldn't expect it, but it gives you hope when you see it because you see it somewhere that looks desolate, and then all of a sudden there's this lovely, beautiful ray of sunshine popping out. Um, okay, this one's for you, Lani Boss. Are we going to put something? What we're going to do into the box? What in the saying? box, bro. What do you box. think? I need a box. In. in the box. In or out? Do you think that's going in or out? 
E. Good. E. Yes. Right. Do you struggle and in then the box? Oh. The last one. Who does that remind you of in the clouds, Jesse? It's a lion king. Oh. Uh, that's the lion king. Can you see next to it? There's a lamb. Yes, the lion and the lamb. So what do you think that reminds you of? Uh, oh, it reminds me of a Garfield joke. Oh, no. <laughs> As you can see, this is not necessarily scripted. So all it's you not. who have hope in the Lord, we're going to go for the Lord. Right, thank you, girls. You've been wonderful. Thank you. Give my clap. So be strong, take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Now, I know that Ray is one of those such people. So uh, I'm going to hopefully bring on Ray, who will magically appear on the screen for all those here. And then for those in Zoom, we'll bring him up uh, and he will be there. Hopefully we'll have a little chat. Can you hear me, Ray? Hello. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. So when I look at the screen where you are, I'm not looking at you in the camera. This is this is what I do at work all the time. I end up like looking at the screens and sort of trying to explain that. So, you think you've got problems. I've got a script on one side. I've got a camera above me. I've got your screen over there. <laughs> Good stuff. Maybe Hello. we can see you even in 3D, but in, in virtual 3D, who knows? Right. Could you, for the benefit of those people who are on Zoom, I, I don't know all the people there, um, and also for the benefit of people on YouTube who might not have met you, could you take us through a little bit about how you are connected to Life Community Baptist Church? Um, just a brief... You actually want me to publicly admit that I've been connected to Life Community Baptist Church? Yeah, well, Goodness me, what are you doing to my reputation here? <laughs> Some years back, we were living in Dur and. Well, yes, some years back we were living in Durban, but that's got nothing to do with it. Some years back we were living in Worthing, and we moved to Horsham, and we needed to find a church, and went to a couple of different churches, and eventually came to Life Community Baptist Church, and thought, this is home, this is where we belong, this is the sort of church we want to be part of. So we joined, that we being Marilyn, my wife and I, and... After we'd been there a while, um, the membership obviously had a little bit too much to drink, and they put me onto the leadership team, and I served as a leader at Life Community Baptist Church for, I believe it was nine years. I'm not sure exactly, but it's approximately nine years. We'll and out, okay. <laughs> and uh, I was also your church secretary during that time, and we had a good time most of the time. Uh, we had migraines part of the time, but yeah, it was great. Uh, and then we moved from uh, Sussex down to Somerset, and obviously it wasn't practical to remain there. I committed myself for the first year we were down here to remain on the leadership team, and I travelled up once a month to speak at the church, and I travelled up um, for all the church members' meetings, and I was on Zoom for all the leaders meetings for a year but at the end of that year it was obvious that I couldn't continue to do that and so sadly we said bye bye and then um obviously now you're obviously you've moved on since then uh, and your work has taken you towards the uh, the home of peace um I was hoping again if you could just share a few current updates of of uh, where you are, what you're doing with the Home of Peace, and maybe a few points of prayer that you'd like us to sort of remember um, and hopefully address sure. a few minutes. During the time that I was at Life Church, Julie, who was at that stage the pastor, took me and, and a number of others, um, Anna, who's there today, I saw her walking around, and a number of others from the church on a trip to Kenya. And whilst over there, we visited what has now become the Home of Peace Children's Home. It wasn't that at the time. It was frankly, uh, I hate to say this, but it was a bit of a dump. Um, they had loads of children, but no facilities, no money, no organization. It, it, it served a purpose, but it, it really wasn't good. And Marilyn, my wife, said that God told her 
we have to take over running this home. I told her she was mad. She said, this is what God has said and feel free to disagree with me, Ray, but that's between you and God. Well, I've learned my lesson over the years and so we got involved in taking over and running it. Now, pointing out that we are not multi-billionaires. In fact, we live on a state pension and we have no money particularly. Um, this seemed like a ridiculous thing to do. But over the last 10, 11 years, God has done incredible things. Um, and honestly, it's God, not us. And I'd like to thank Anna particularly for the brilliant little article she put in Breakthrough this week, which I read. Um, and if you haven't read that about Home of Peace, please do, because that gives you more detail than I've got time to do this morning. But let me show you a couple of pictures. Oh, that is not exactly what, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Uh, home of Peace Children's Home. Um, sorry, I'm just fiddling here because I have to move a couple of things around. These are children who've got nothing. Many of them were found just sitting on the side of the road somewhere dumped by parents or thrown out by their family. Children who, if they hadn't been taken in, would have had really one of two options. They'd have either died of starvation or they'd have somehow survived and ended up on drugs or involved in crime because there's no other way for them to even get food. Now they have a beautiful home. We registered with the Kenyan government and the Department of Children's Services tell us that we are one of the best run and equipped children's homes in the whole of the country. That is God's doing, not ours. The children are sent to us by the courts. So people say to us, how do you know these children are the right ones to be there? Well, we don't make that decision. The children's court will say this child needs to be sent to Home of Peace and they'll commit them to us and they will review that commitment on a regular basis to make sure that the child should stay there. They also inspect us fairly regularly. One of the advantages, I'm speaking fast here, but forgive me because Dave told me I've only got limited time. He said I have an hour and I'll try to keep it to that. Um, one of the advantages our children have, apart from the fact that they get food and clothing and medical care is that they can go to school. And that is something that may seem trivial to those of us living in this country, but many, many, many children in Kenya do not have the privilege of going to school. And those who do normally only go for a couple of years, but ours will stay at school right through primary school and then either go on to secondary school if they're academic or on to technical college if they're more practical. And when they come out, they've got a qualification that means something and they can become so is there, constructive is members. Is there, that's, that's lovely. Sorry, Pete, uh, Dave, I can't gonna, hear you. Could... I'm going to ask you, um, is there something you would like us to focus our prayers yeah, on? So... We'll do. Let me just quickly run through this and then I'll tell you. That just shows you some of the secondary school children. Now, as it's outlined in the newsletter that Anna wrote, we have a bunch of new children starting secondary school on the 25th of April. It's going to cost us £6,150 to send them there. Uh, when we sent out the newsletter about that, we had, I think it was £1.50 towards it. We now have £4,000 towards it, so please pray that God will provide the other £2,000 in the time that we have, which is between now and the 25th of April. We also get new children referred to us. These were found abandoned. Their parents had just vanished and they were brought to us just a few weeks ago. It turned out that one of them has um, sickle cell anemia, one has typhoid, and three of them were suffering from clinical malnutrition. We've had to take them in, we've had to clothe them, we've had to provide them with 
uniforms and everything for schooling, and we had to cover their medical expenses. Again, we need God's provision. So please pray that God will continue to provide what is needed for the children at Home of Peace and give us wisdom in how we deal with it. Amen. Thank you, Ray. Uh, obviously, tremendous work and also at the same time, uh, yeah, heartbreaking work in some ways. And we ask that, uh, yeah, we'll be praying for all the, uh, the workers out there to, to have that wisdom and care and understanding of where these children have come from and to try and build them up from a place of you know, near enough nothing to hopefully something where they can uh, be a real impact in society and contribute. Um, the work you're doing is obviously fabulous and from our perspective clearly a uh, sort of a god-driven piece of work so we we love that and today um, we will be collecting uh, on, on behalf of Hope of, of Peace. Um, uh, uh, there's also another way of giving uh, so there's a collection plate here today that we'll obviously be uh, putting through to you guys but on the e-breakthrough, as Ray mentioned, so if you go to our website, click on the e-breakthrough, it's got details of how to give uh, through that mechanism as well. So if you want to give online, please go to the uh, Life Community Baptist Church, you know, WWW, like High Community, Community Baptist Church, uh, Life Baptist Church, um, uh, and then go to find the e-breakthrough, and then you'll find ways to give. It's a bit convoluted, I apologise, but there is a way there, isn't there, Anna? She's, uh, I'm looking at Anna and she's nodding at me. Yes, yes, it's yes. yes. Not actually on the <laughs> it's, it's on the e breakthrough. That's the, yeah, that's so the bit. Of... To, yes, contact me and I'll there you go. Um, with that, thank you, Ray. And uh, yeah, thank you for everyone contributing so far. I'm now going to pass over to Sarah, who hopefully is at home waiting eagerly for the next bit where she'll be praying for us um, and leading us in our prayers. Hello. Oh. Hello. I'm just trying to swap you. That's fine. I've lost my mouth. My voice from beyond at the moment. You are, you are the voice from beyond. <laughs> it's so strange being here. I've got this very weird perspective on things. Kind of the same situation that Ray had, you know. And in your hand. The wife is the uh, voice of God. <laughs> That's no. No. Um, hello, hello everyone. <laughs> um, is it possible to uh, have the slides up as well, um, Andy? Am I complicating matters? I like to give Andy a challenge. I know he can cope with it, that's why. I might not be able to see it here, but I don't know what's going on in the room. There we go. Brilliant. Awesome. So uh, really, really, it's really lovely to see everybody uh, in the room. Just be aware that you probably, I don't know if you are aware, I wouldn't have been aware, but it's really nice at the moment, there's a camera facing the room. So those of us on Zoom can see what you're all doing while, while church is going on. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, but it's lovely to see everybody this morning. Sorry, I couldn't be there. Um, I am now testing negative, which is great, but I didn't want to take the risk. Also, Matty is now testing positive. So, so one of us has to be at home with him and that's just the way it is. Um, very, I'm very glad and that I got the privilege of leading us in um, prayers this morning. And this, um, this memory verse for today, be strong and take heart all you who hope in the Lord is from uh, the very last verse of Psalm 31. And this is an important psalm to the people of Ukraine at the moment. It's a psalm that they've kind of, the, the Ukrainian Christians seem to have adopted as a, um, as a psalm for their times. And after I've prayed, after I've led us in prayer, um, they are going to lead us in prayer through Psalm 31 in a, in a video um, that I'm going to show you, which is quite, quite fantastic. But we'll move on to that in a moment. So with that in mind... Um, and these verses in mind, let's bring, um, there's so many needs, aren't there? But I've just selected a few. Uh, <laughs> and um, please join me in, in lifting these things up to the Lord this morning. So, Lord, the first thing we'd like to pray for, we start with, our, with what's close at heart, um, what's close to us. And we pray for our church family. 
we ask lord for guidance for wisdom um, and probably most of all for inspiration for our leadership team um, and for pete and all who serve um, in our church life please at this moment protect us from discouragement and increase our love and for the church's future lord we simply ask that your will be done and that we would be willing followers of your direction help us as we try now to discern and to distill a clear vision moving forwards and please encourage us in our praying to this end Help us, Lord, to be a people known by our love and our unity. Bind us together in purpose through your spirit and help us to see and value each other equally as image bearers. Lord, we need your help to work together, not in spite of, but because of, or because of, but through our differences. To celebrate our differences and to be a community that is welcoming to all. And Lord, we do lift up those who are known to us who are persevering with illnesses, be those illnesses connected to physical or mental health, and in some cases, both. And Lord, in this time, we just, um, in the quiet, just see the faces and um, see in our mind's eye the names of those that, that we know who are in this situation, and we bring them before you. And Lord, we also remember those we know who are supporting loved ones who are traveling very difficult roads at the moment. We pray for strength to continue and for your healing touch. Bring peace and encouragement, and protect them from despair. Remind them and remind us of the hope that is Jesus. And Lord, we bring you the home of peace and Ray and Marilyn and all the people that work at Home of Peace and who help to make it function. We thank you so much for the work of Ray and Marilyn and all that you have done through them. We can see that you have done amazing things over the years. And you have always provided, Lord, even very, you know, last minute, Charlie, which is often your way to increase our faith. And I know that Ray and Marilyn have many stories of, of the impossible being achieved. And Lord, we do pray now. We thank you for what has already been provided towards the cost for this year. And we pray now, Lord, that you would provide that extra money, that extra two and a bit thousand pounds that is required move people's hearts to give. And Lord, we also pray for the new children arriving. May you bless them. Thank you for bringing them. We pray for provision for them and we pray for healing, physical and emotional. Please, Lord, continue to bless the work at the Home of Peace. And we kind of move, uh, turn our eyes now from what's close to the wider world around us. And there's so much to pray for, uh, too much, really. And it's very, very easy to fear, to become fearful. So we try to fight against that fear with the sword of prayer. And we lift up just a few of the situations that need your all-powerful love and your perfect justice. Firstly, I pray for Ukraine you know there's so, so many specific things we could pray for but lord we just ask for peace um for peace for those who need peace 
reconciliation for those who need reconciliation and comfort for all who don't know what tomorrow will bring. Lord, may your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord God, we ask for you to be with all, especially children who are suffering as the crisis deteriorates. Lord, for those who are anxious and fearful, for those who are bereaved, injured, and lost their lives, and for those who've lost loved ones. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we ask that decision makers hear your voice. Parents, Lord, protecting their families, deciding whether to stay or to leave, that they may hear your voice. Church leaders, as they support and comfort people, that they may hear your voice. And Lord, we ask for wise actions, compassionate actions, from global leaders who have the power not only to start wars, but to stop them too. And we cry out for an end to this crisis, for mercy, peace and truth, because you are light, hope, power and love. And Lord, you came and you showed us your way and it didn't make sense to the people who heard you then and often sounds strange and upside down to those who hear it now. But you told your disciples, you've heard it said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. And in the spirit of wanting to be your children, this morning we pray for Russia and its people. Show your mercy and your grace to them and may your love and your truth be revealed to them. We bless all efforts being made by individuals and groups, both Christian and secular, that are trying in some way to do your work and your will in this country at this time. Protect and prosper them for the glory of your name. And may your kingdom come and keep coming for the Russian people too. We pray, Lord, for Afghanistan, which is beginning to be forgotten again because of these other issues of so many other countries. But they're close, uh, more than 8 million people now are on the brink of famine, Lord. And you see each precious life and you hear the cries of the powerless and the downtrodden. Be merciful to them, for they are in distress. And Holy Spirit, help us to pray and show us how to act. And Lord, I just want to remind us of Yemen this morning. And I feel like you bring Yemen to my heart so often. Amanda Mukwashi, who's the CEO of Christian Aid, has said recently that Yemen is the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today, and we cannot let it be forgotten. But I feel it has been forgotten, Lord, or was never remembered properly in the first place. Lord, we don't hear much about these long-suffering people and the devastation in Yemen in our news reports through our media. Lord, help us to pursue the truth and to ask ourselves the difficult question of why this is. May we as Christians be a humble people of your kingdom only and champion all life made in your image. In your mercy, Lord, break political deadlocks there, soften hardened hearts, change closed minds, open unhearing ears. Let people come before power. Lord, let life be holy again. Let your justice and peace shape the nation of Yemen and the lives of all the people there. Lord, we lift up all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. The only one who gives us hope in such times as these. Amen. We're going now to watch uh, a video and we're going to continue our prayers. We're going to pray with the Ukrainian people as they read Psalm 31 to us from various shelters and places of shelter um, and homes that haven't yet been uh, devastated, but they are waiting. Um, if you have, and you can read it from the screen because the words will come up, but if you have a Bible, you might want to read Psalm 31 um, as you're listening as well. Thank you, Andy. Andy. 
Для диригента хору псалом Давиду. На тебе надіюсь, я Господи, хай не буду повік засоромлений. Визволь мене в своїй правді. Нахили своє ухо до мене, скоро мене порятуй. Стань для мене могутньою скелою, дом твердий мій, щоб спасти мене. Я зненавидів всіх, хто шанує Бога нездарних. Я ж надіюсь на Господа. Я буду радіти та тішитись в Твоїй милості, що побачив це горе моє, що приглянувся Ти до страдати моєї душі. І мене не віддав в руку ворога, на місці розлоги поставив Ти ноги мої. Помилив мене, Господи, бо тісно мені, від горя вже виснажилось у моєму мені, душа моя і нутро моє. Бо скінчилось життя моє в смутку, а роки мої у квилінні. Моя сила спіткнулася через мій гріх, і виснажились мої кості. Я в усіх ворогів своїх став посміховищем, надто сусідом своїм. І страхіттям знайомим моїм, хто бачить на дворі мене, утікають від мене. Я забутий у серці, немов той небіжник. Став я немов та розбита посудина. Бо чую багато шептання, страхання навколо, як змовляються разом на мене. Вони замишляють забрати мою душу. А я покладаю надію на тебе, о Господи. Я кажу, ти мій Бог. В твою руку кладу свою долю. Ти ж визволь мене від руки ворогів моїх і моїх переслідників. Засяй світлом свого обличчя на твого раба. Спаси мене у своєму милосерді. Господи! Не дай мені осоромитись, адже я кличу до тебе. Нехай осоромляться нечестиві і змовкнуть у шоолі. Нехай заніміють обманливі уста, які зухвали зі зневагою, наговорюють на праведника. Яка ж велика твоя доброта, яку ти приготував для тих, що тебе шанують та на тебе покладаються і виявляєш її перед усіма людськими нащадками. Ти їх у заслоні обличчя свого заховаєш від людських тенет. Ти їх від лихих язиків у наметі сховаєш. Благословений Господь, що вчинив мені милість чудову свою в оборонному місці. А я говорив у своїм побентеженні. Я відрізаний сперед очей твоїх. Та дійсно, ти вислухав голос благання мого, коли я до тебе взивав. Любіть Господа усі святі Його. Стереже Господь вірних, а гордому злишком відплачує. Будьте сильні, і хай буде міцне ваше серце. Усі, хто надію покладає на Господа. Псалом 31. Thank you. Um, and I think I'm going to invite just to respond to that now. Uh, Judy's going to come and lead us in a couple more songs. Um, that cry out, I think, in the same vein. Thank you, Julie. Okay, you can hear me now. No worries, we'll get there. Thanks, Sarah. We're going to respond to those prayers by singing a song called Lord, You Hear the Cry, Lord, Have Mercy. Um, it's a new one, so um, let us sing the first verse and then join in when you can. It's quite easy to pick up, I hope. And um, yeah, the, the words are very, very powerful. <clears throat> Don't you hear the cry of the widow weeping? Don't you hear the cry of the child entreated? Don't you hear? Oh, 
We want to bless the Lord forever because he is our shield, our strength, our deliverer. We thank you, Lord.
thank you that you are there in our time of need. You are our strength, our strong tower, and you are with us, you are ever present. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. I've got a hand over to Ray now. I'd just like to pray for Ray. Father, please uh, give Ray words of wisdom as he brings us your message today and help us to remember what he says throughout the week and to act on the words and not let, not let them stay in this building. We pray that we these words will touch our hearts and help us to do your work on earth. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Over to Ray now. Am I unmuted? I hope I am unmuted. All right, bear with me while I try and make sure that I am not muted. I don't want to be muted. Uh, bring that down. No, as far as I can tell, I'm unmuted. You are, right? Okay, thank you very much. I don't know who I am, but we'll try and get there. Okay, as I was saying, I have a friend, which I know some of you will find difficult to believe, but I do have a friend, uh, the Reverend Abel Governor, and he recently put a little comment on Facebook saying that um, he preached 10 minutes overtime at a church recently, and they renamed him instead of Reverend, but never end. Well, if you feel the same about me today, please forgive me. But apparently, according to the notes that I was given, I'm starting 10 minutes ago. So I may go a couple of minutes over time, but I'll do my best to speak quickly and to leave out anything that is not 100% relevant. We are continuing with chapter three and amazing book. I'm not going to try and cover the whole of the chapter. It's got 58 pages in it. And that may be just a little bit beyond my ability, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it to Micah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. And as we look at Micah, hopefully we'll be able to see how this applies to chapter 3 of the book that we are working through. Now, if I can just get myself to come back here, I don't know, Andy, is there a reason why I am missing completely? All I've got is my shared screen, but there is no screen with me on it at all. And so I'm unable to do some of the things that I would like. No, can't do it. No. Okay. Well, we'll just have to work with the slides on and I, I, I can't unshare at the moment. Uh, can I? No, I can't unshare, sir. So. If I stop sharing there, uh, that's better. Right. Sorry about that. Um, but I was just trying to get things straightened out this end. Okay, so we're going to be looking at Micah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, to see what we can learn there about justice. Because it's a very interesting chapter, and God is going to give Micah a complaint against his people because the people have been living lives of injustice, lives of cruelty. They've been oppressing their own people and God begins to present his case against the people to Micah in chapter six and verse one, he says, stand up, plead my case before the mountains, let the hills hear what you have to say, hear you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a case against his people, and he is lodging a charge against Israel. E, strong words. I wouldn't like anybody to lodge a charge against me about anything. That must be pretty scary and horrendous and uncomfortable. But the Lord is lodging a charge against his people. What is this charge? Well, listen to what God says. My people. What have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. 
I brought you up out of Egypt. I redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you and Aaron and Miriam, my people. Remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Boar, answered. Remember your journey from the Acacia Grove to Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. And then in verse 6 and 7, it's almost as if the people say, what do you want us to do, Lord? What, what, where, where do we go from here, Lord? Listen, they say, with, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? What do you want me to do, God? You know, I, I've heard those kind of sentiments many times, maybe not quite as intense, but people say, I wish I knew what God wants me to do. What does God want? What is God's will? Well, God told the people here, and I believe what he said to the people here applies to you and to me just as well. The response is in verse 8, where God says this. Let me get that slide back up, and hopefully we can see it. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. To act justly. Justice is what we've been looking at. To love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. But the problem was they were acting with injustice. They had no use for mercy. And they're certainly not walking with God. They're walking without him. But justice is important to God. We read the word justice over 130 times in the Bible. For example, speaking to Isaiah in verse 17 of chapter 1, he says, learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Learn to do right. Great, wonderful words, but what does it actually mean? You know, those of you who know me know that I like to put a handle on something. I don't want just a, a vague philosophical or theological concept. I want something I can take out of here and do tomorrow, today, next week. What does it mean? Well, let's try and simplify it. It means to do what is right and just and fair in every situation. It's an unconditional thing. It means that as I walk with the Lord, I'm to size up every situation and do the right thing. The honest thing, even if it's inconvenient, even if it costs me. Now, let me, just in brackets, be very clear. We are not justified in the eyes of God as a result of doing the right thing. Okay, we are not. The Bible says, not by works, lest any man should boast. We are not justified by doing the right thing, but if we have come into a relationship with God, it should change our hearts. And the result of that should be that we change the way we live. So we are not saved by our walking justly, but we walk justly because we've been saved. And often in the Bible, there's a quartet of individuals who are mentioned in connection with injustice. And those are widows, the orphans, the immigrants, and the poor. Because often those groups were just days away from dying of starvation. A lot of time has passed since Micah was written, but you know, not a lot has changed. We are reminded of that in the prayers this morning. 
So how do we show justice? How do we walk in justice? Well, one of the things we need to do is to share the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible has got good news for individuals and groups who are marginalized. He says, come to me and I'll give you forgiveness and life. God is for the forgotten and for the beat down and for the shut out and for the left behind. But the question for today is, in addition to proclaiming the gospel, which we must do, what can you and I do to defend the cause of the oppressed and to act justly? Today, I want to introduce you to two Hebrew words. That's the first one up on your screen. It's pronounced mishpa. The T at the end is not pronounced. And this is what we might think of as the things that a government ought to do or as any organization ought to do. It should be built into the policy of every corporation. It should be part of the communal working of the church. This is organizational justice. And it includes a number of things in that word mishpa. It includes equality before the law. And in theory, that means everybody is treated equally, regardless of status. It means acquitting or punishing people on the merit of their case, not on who they know, how much money they've given, what color they are, what country they come from equality before the law. And as a Christian, when I see that this is not happening, I have a duty to speak up. We'll come back to that. Mishpah also includes the concept of deterrence, the idea of restraining evil, of providing a real reason for the evildoers to think twice before committing a crime. You're going to get to jail or whatever. Now, interestingly, as you read through Deuteronomy, Nearly every time God gives a law and says, if you disobey this, this is what the punishment is, he explains why. It's, there's always a good reason. And it, it's fascinating to read. I wish governments today would be a bit more like that. Then there's what we call retributive justice, which involves punishing those who break the law. Maybe putting them in prison. And then there's restorative justice, and that involves bringing wholeness to those who are victims of crime or the criminals. And in this country and in other countries, to the Prison Fellowship, a wonderful Christian ministry, does a great deal along these lines. So these are the things that are involved in justice, in mishpa. These are the things we have a right to expect from those in authority over us. These are the things we have a right to expect from our government. These are the things we have a right to expect from society. These are the things we should be striving for and pushing for and speaking out against when they are not there. Equality before the law, deterrence, retributive justice and restorative justice. Just a quick, quick little passing comment. Some people seem to be hung up on punishment, and some people seem to be hung up on restoration, and which is it? Well, the Bible seems to indicate this place for both. Look at what it says in Psalm 72. May the king, may the king judge, may, may the king Judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May he defend the cause of the poor people and give deliverance to the children of the needy and may he crush the oppressor. We need both. It's not either or, it's both. Now, I'll just come back to here for a moment and to there for a moment, there for a moment. Okay. Um, once again, I have lost my ability to... Ah, there we are. That's more like it. Okay. 
As a follower of Jesus, I want justice to be handed down to the oppressor. I want the oppressor to be punished, but I also want the needs of the poor and the victims to be defended. And I want the oppressor to be not just punished, but restored. So mishpah has to do with things that a government might do. Does that mean that as an individual, I have no role to play in mishpah? No, not at all. Let's take the most basic. I have incredible privileges and power. Privileges I admit I take for granted. I can vote. I can make my voice heard. I can speak up for what I believe is right and godly. And unfortunately, too many Christians, I'm afraid, do not. We say, oh, I'm not going to get involved in politics. No, no. Well, fair enough. But God got involved in politics. And there's a time when we need to get involved. Sometimes it means speaking the truth to those in power. Whatever that position of power may be, be it the government or leaders or whatever. Sometimes we may be able to use something like social media, which is very powerful in a way to reach out to people. You know, sometimes we get so used to something that even though it's not right, we don't recognize that it's a problem. And somebody needs to point it out. We see this in Acts chapter 6, where the Greek-speaking Jewish widows were not being treated justly and equally. And the apostles were so busy studying the scripture, shepherding the church, growing the gospel, that they were unaware of it. They, they just didn't notice it. But when it was brought to their attention, they did something about it. And they appointed seven men to attend to this matter. As believers, we should care about justice. And where there's something wrong, we need to speak up. I want to give you a second word. No, I'm not going to say it just yet. But that's a word that we may have difficulty pronouncing. Or you may think you'd have difficulty pronouncing it. We're not used to words that begin T Z and have a Q without a U. But let me give you a very quick quiz, and because of time, it will be quick. I'm going to put up some snaps from an old time record. And if you recognize the name of the singer, then um, don't shout it out, but just feel proud of yourself. But some of the songs this person was known for were Breaking Up is Hard to Do, Laughter in the Rain, Calendar Girl, O Carol, Happy Birthday, Sweet Sixteen. Even the song that came back a little while back, Show Me the Way to Amarilla, was first sung by this individual. That man. That man whose name you may or may not recognize, if you're over the age of something or other, you may not recognize the name Neil Sadaka, but believe me, Neil Sadaka was a big star in his days. Sadaka, that is how the word is actually pronounced. It's as simple as that. The second Hebrew word is Sadaka. And that is talking about really primary justice, living and acting towards other people in a way that shows the reality of God's justice in our lives. Listen for a moment to what the scripture says to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. The Lord says, I've chosen him that he may command his children and his household according to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and doing justice so that the Lord may bring Abraham 
what he has promised him. Do you hear the words there? That he may command his children and his household to do righteousness and justice. As a Christian, your home and my home should be a microcosm of Sadaka. Justice should radiate out from our home. We should be examples of justice in how we live and how we govern our family and how we rule our lives. Eric Mocha, an Irish theologian, says that that word seek, which we saw in Isaiah earlier on, is not just a passive word. It's not a nodding of the head. It's setting it as a priority and saying, I will go and make this happen. As justice loving followers of Christ, we are bound to pursue justice. My aim, my goal, my prayer is that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Great thoughts. But surely, if we pause for a moment, we'll realize that if God's will is being done on earth, it will become a just place because God is a God who's just. And if I want God's will to be done, I want God's kingdom to come, then I need to be working towards that. I need to start to defend those who are suffering from injustice. I need to seek justice. I need to use my mouth and my written words and my time and my body and my resources, and my money to deal with it. When I see something that is wrong, I need to speak up. Proverbs 31 verse 8 says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. But that passage in Micah goes on, it says, not only are we to do justice, but we are to love mercy. And notice it doesn't say that we are to do mercy, but to love mercy. It doesn't say we are to do justice, but to, uh, not to love justice, but to do it. There's some people who, who love justice, but they never do it. And there's some people who do mercy, but they just hyper, hyper, Congrat, hyper, hyper, oh, you know what I'm trying to say. I've, words gone from my mouth. Hypocrites, that's the word I was trying to say. They do it, but God's looking at the heart. We need to love mercy and we need to do justice even if we don't feel like it it means mercy it means kindness it means not cherishing evil in our hearts it means doing good towards other people it means refusing to hold a grudge it means forgiveness it means restoration it means reaching out to those in need and then God said also in that passage in Micah that we need to walk humbly with our God. This simply means that we live in constant close communication and fellowship with God, that we submit our will to his. It's a daily thing. And these three link together. You can't have justice without mercy because it becomes unbalanced. And as a human being, you can't do either unless you're walking humbly with God, because it's God who gives you that right heart and God whose spirit will lead you and God whose spirit will guide you. So how do we do it? We walk humbly with God. constantly aware of him, asking him to open our eyes to the situations we encounter in life, asking him to help us to communicate his justice, his mercy and his love. Humbly means it's a lowly attitude, I can't do it myself. But God can do it through you and through me.
he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. May God help you and I to put that into practice today, this week, and for the rest of our lives. Dave, back to you. Ah, I see him running. I see him oh, running. There you, go. you caught me. You caught me. I thought I had another few seconds. There you go. Thank you, Ray. Um, uh, yeah, we are obviously um, uh, a few minutes over of where we hope to be, but um, we will be sharing a cup of tea with each other in a moment. Obviously, those on Zoom and at uh, home, sadly, you can't join us. Um, but before we do, um, you know, Ray has, has shared with us, and I think our Embracing Justice series is, is uh, challenging us with quite, how can I put it? I've got three young kids, so quite mature subjects. These are not easy subjects. You know, the, the concept of justice, to love justice, to uh, act, um, or is it you just said, love justice, mercy and humility, those, those to walk humbly, um, those concepts, you know, justice, mercy, and hum um, humbleness, they're really difficult and they're really challenging for me to understand. But it's obvious when it's obvious. And I think we've got some clear prayers for countries that are in distress, people who are in distress. And you can see it really obviously when, when people don't have justice, there's an obviousness to it. The, the home of peace, um, clearly deals with an injustice. No one would ever expect any child to ever um, manage by themselves, you know, to be, to be oh yes, you'll, you'll be self-sufficient at the age of three. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So we know justice and we know mercy and we can be humble when it's obvious. And I guess for me, whatever it was that jumped out of you today, if you did have something that came out today for you in your heart, you know, I'm not asking you to share with everybody, but uh, when we have a cup of tea, don't just have a cup of tea and sort of ignore that moment. If you have something, you know, share it with somebody. And actually in that sharing, you'll find that we all grow more. So I would encourage you to, to share that bit of inspiration that you had, even if it doesn't come out quite as clearly as Ray's wife with the sort of God's told me this, but more, I reflected on this. And if you had one of those, I would encourage you to share, to make, uh, to almost cement what was delivered to you today. And it can be very personal. It can be very generic. It doesn't matter. I would just encourage you because in encouraging uh, each of us to try and share a little bit, it'll encourage others to share. And you never know, you might hear a real gem from someone else who said, I heard this. And you went, oh, I didn't pick up on that. So please do share and obviously please do give generously to the, to the home of peace. Um, they're clearly doing an amazing piece of work. Um, I wanted to leave everybody with a, um, uh, uh, a blessing before we disappeared. So um, what I'll leave you with is, and I know you shouldn't take uh, verses out of context, but I think on this occasion, uh, I don't think there's any harm. Um, if you're looking for it, read the whole of Romans if you wish. Um, alternatively, chapter 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 